Hello and welcome to Let's Talk with Bishop R.C. Blakes. R.C. is an author, empowerment teacher and the proud pastor of the New Home Ministries of New Orleans, Louisiana and Houston, Texas. His message circles the globe. His conversational and candid approach to challenging content makes him a relevant voice to all generations. Get ready for a life-changing transformational conversation. Merry Christmas to you. Merry Christmas, Merry Christmas, Merry Christmas. This is your pastor, R.C. Blakes Jr., and I am so excited about uh, this day arriving. Anybody that knows me knows that Christmas time is my favorite time of year. It's the time, it's the day that we've chosen to celebrate the birth of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. It is a very, very special day for us who are for we who are Christians, and I pray that you are having a blessed Christmas. Please understand that Christmas time is really not about your receiving. It's about your giving. Don't, don't, don't get caught up on who's going to give you what or how many presents you have or do not have under the tree. This is a time for us to really celebrate the life of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ by doing exactly what he did in coming here in our stead. He gave, the Father gave the Son, and the Son gave his life. And so for you, if you really want to make this time of year most fulfilling on all levels, make it a time where you are giving to others. If you should be blessed Praise God. But if not, praise God. Let the focus be on giving and not receiving. Now, with this in mind, go to Isaiah chapter 9 and verse 6. One of the favorite passages of Scripture to read during these times is Isaiah 9 and 6, where it says, For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. And the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Man, we have a whole month-long series there, maybe a two-month-long series if we really unpacked and exegeted all that's in that particular scripture. But I want us to jump to the end of the text, where he is described as the Prince of Peace. Now, if you didn't know it, it's talking about our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. It says, for unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. Well, the child was the physical manifestation that came through the womb of Mary. The child was born. God created a vessel of flesh for his eternal son to occupy, that he might come into the world legally, and that is by way of the womb of a woman, and that he might identify with mankind. Because if you rewind all the way back to the book of Genesis, where God created mankind, Adam and Eve, and God said, well, you have free run of the garden, just don't touch this fruit. For the day that you touch this fruit, you shall surely die. Fast forwarding, Eve comes and she entices Adam to taste of the fruit, and Adam tasted the fruit. Adam did not physically die, but Adam was spiritually separated from the Creator, from the Almighty. And so now there's a division between the Creator and the creation. And the wages of sin is what? Death. But watch this. There cannot just be any man that can pay or could pay the price for Adam's transgression. It was a man that transgressed, so a man would have to pay the price. And so sin transferred from one generation, separation from God, 
transferred from one generation to the next. Through Adam, all men became sinners. Only way a man could qualify to die and to pay the price for the sins of mankind, that man would have to have been perfect. That man would have, have, would have to have been one that kept every jot and tittle of the law. We could not find such a man. So God created a house of flesh, put it in the womb of Mary, occupied that house with his son, Jesus Christ, who came into the world by the womb of Mary, a child was born. That's what we celebrate on this day. But then the scripture says, but a son was given. The child was made of flesh and had a birth date. The son of Mary had a birth date, but the son of God was eternal. So the child was born, but the son was given. And so you know the whole story. Jesus lives 33 years sinlessly, fulfilling every aspect of the law. He dies on the cross for all of mankind. So just like through Adam, we all became sinners. Now through Jesus, we all become the righteousness of God. All we need do is to express faith in him as our Lord and Savior. Just like you became a sinner without any works of your own, you inherited that from Adam. You become the righteousness of God by no works of your own. Just accept him as your Lord and Savior. I had to give you that, but now let's get to my topic for today, the Prince of Peace. Because when we think about Christmas, the spirit of Christmas that I think resonates with me the most is that, I don't know if you've paid attention to it, it's a time when men seem to be more at peace with themselves and the world and with one another than ever. It's the, it's the most, it seems to be, or it feels like, it's the most peace-filled season of the year. And Jesus is the Prince of Peace. Now, why, why, why is he considered to be the Prince of Peace? It's because it is through Jesus Christ that we receive peace that passes all understanding. Number one, Jesus gives us peace with the Father. I just got through breaking that down for you. Through Jesus, we, we are now at peace with the Father. Adam created a war. With his transgression, a holy God could not reconnect with a, a mankind or a creation that was in transgression and disobedience. So there was a war of sorts. But through the finished work of Jesus Christ, Jesus gives us, he brings us to a place of peace with the Father. If you look in Romans chapter 5, in verse 1, it says, Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. We who were once afar off and alienated are now brought in close and can run in boldly and say, Father, I need help because Jesus gives us peace with the Father. Why is he the Prince of Peace? Number two, Jesus gives us peace with ourselves. Oh, I don't care what you say. You know, we have all kinds of cults and different religions that say, well, Christianity is a white man's religion and and just they say all kinds of things, you know, it's it's uh it's just myth mythological and, and none of the characters are actually real. They're not real historical characters. And if you're a Christian, you're this and you're that. Well, you can say what you want. But I have to tell you this the peace that I have, that I that I attained from my ascent. To Jesus Christ and making him 
Lord of my life. You can say what you want. You can't convince me that Jesus Christ is not real. You can't talk me out of my relationship with Jesus Christ because the peace is real. When, 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 when other religions and cults are still indoctrinating and doing a lot of talk and a lot of rambling and, and spewing out a lot of rhetoric, I have a peace in my heart with the Father that gives me a peace with myself. If you go to 1 John chapter 2, verses 1 and 2, it reads like this, My little children, these things write I unto you, that ye sin not. And if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. And he is the propitiation for our sins, and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. He gives, he brings me to a place where I'm at peace with myself because Jesus makes me know that I don't have to be perfect. And if I, if I mess up, I have an advocate, I have someone that is going to plead my case with the Father. He also makes me know that he empowers me to live right. But when I miss it, I'm not thrown away. I'm not alienated. I have, I'm at peace within myself because I have an advocate in Jesus Christ the righteous. I like the way the Apostle Paul writes it in Philippians chapter 3. Uh, verses 12 through 14, he says, not as though I had already attained, either were already perfect, but I follow after that, I follow after if, if that I may apprehend that for which also I am apprehended of Christ Jesus. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended or arrived, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before. I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. He gives me peace with myself that even when I'm not perfect, I'm not an outcast, I'm not separated from God. He gives me a rest within me that his grace is sufficient. Come on now. When 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 modern day Pharisees are judging and, and legalistic and, and seem to make everybody feel like nobody's really going to make it to heaven. Jesus says to me, I'm the Prince of Peace. I'm your advocate. I'm the propitiation for your sins. Forget those things which are behind and press forward unto those things that are before. So he gives me peace within myself. I don't have the confusion. I don't have the whirlwind of guilt and shame that I once had because I can bring it all to the cross and I can leave it all at the cross and move away from it into a brilliant and bright future and grow in that same grace. Now, thirdly, we call him the Prince of Peace because Jesus gives us peace with life. Now, if you know anything about life, oh my God, one thing you will attest to, life can be unpredictable. Life can be like uh, <laughs> New Orleans weather. In New Orleans, we can go from 30s and then two days later, or maybe even the next day, we can be in the 80s. It can, the sun can be shining and all of a sudden the skies can get black. Life is unpredictable. But when one has a proper relationship with Jesus Christ, when you're saved, and I mean saved for real, he gives you a peace even in the midst of darkening skies. When, when the ship is rocking and the waves of the sea are tossing it to and fro, Jesus Christ gives us peace with life.
So it doesn't matter. Some things have come against you. Some things have happened in your life. This year even, that you thought would have rocked you and would have knocked you off of your feet. But Jesus Christ has been your stability because he gives us peace in and with life. If you look in John chapter 14, verse 27, he says, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give unto you, not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. He gives me peace with life, that things that would terrify normal people, things that will uh, push some people over the edge. I have the peace of Jesus Christ that's in me gives me the power to choose my response. And I choose to let not my heart be troubled. Neither am I going to let it be afraid. That is the power of Jesus's peace. He doesn't give us peace like the world gives. The peace that the world gives is based on favorable circumstances. When the doctor's report is great, the world has an all-time high of peace. When the money is, you know, endless, the world has peace. When the marriage is, is clicking on all cylinders, the world has peace. But this peace that Jesus gives us allows us to be in a place of rest and joy, even when the doctor's report didn't sound too good, even when the money has run out, even when the marriage is on the rocks. This peace that Jesus gives us gives us peace with life in all of its forms. And then number four, and finally, Jesus gives us peace with eternity. It's because I know Jesus Christ. It's because he is sealed away in my heart that I'm not concerned that when I close my eyes in the sleep of death, that everything is going to be all right. My eternity is already fixed. Glory to God. If you go to 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and uh, verses 6 through 10, it says this, Therefore, we are always confident, knowing that while we are at home in the body, we are absent from the Lord. We walk by faith, not by sight. We are confident, I say, and willing rather to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. Wherefore, we labor that whether present or absent, we may be accepted of him, for we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that everyone may receive the things done in his body. According to that, he hath done, whether it be good or bad. He says, you know, we'd rather be present with the Lord. Death for us is not a tragedy. It's a transition into promotion. And so when we know that we know him, we can live our lives free of the fear that most people have. And it's the fear of death. Because for us, we'd rather be absent from the body and be present with the Lord. The Apostle Paul put it uh, to a certain church. He said, you know, uh, I would rather be with the Lord, but I hang around here for your sake. There's still some things that I need to deposit into you. There's some things you need from me, but make no mistake about it. I don't have a problem transitioning. And when you live that kind of life in Christ, he gives you a peace about your eternity. And so, yes, he is the Prince of Peace because he gives us peace. He brings us into a place of peace with the Father. He gives us peace with ourselves when 
we would otherwise be wrapped up and tied down by guilt and shame. He gives us peace with ourselves. He gives us peace with life. And Jesus ultimately brings us peace with eternity. So Merry Christmas today. Happy holidays, however you want to say it. But always remember this. Jesus is the reason for the season. Jesus is our peace. Now you're there and you're saying, well, pastor, I need to give my life, my heart to the Lord. You know, I, I want to be saved even on this Christmas day. If you're watching this in real time, I want to be saved. I want to surrender my heart, my life to the Lord. There's an email address on the bottom of the screen. If you email us, someone is going to respond to you and someone's going to minister to you and lead you through the scripture and help you to understand your salvation in Christ. Now, those of you that want to join New Home Church, you may also do it there. Or maybe you've just been in a place where you've, you, you know the Lord, but you've been backslidden and you need someone to pray for you. Someone is going to pray for you. And I celebrate with you today and I'd love nothing more than to welcome you into the family of God and prayerfully even into the new home family. Now on this Christmas morning, as we prepare to honor the Lord on the day that we celebrate the Lord's birth, the day that we celebrate the Lord's birth, you know what I want you to do today? I want every person to sow a $33 seed. I want every person to sow a $33 seed. Our Lord and Savior lived for 33 years. I want every person to sow a $33 seed in honor, in honor of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ being born into the world, living amongst us 33 years, and then dying on that cross, getting up from that grave with all power in his hands, and bridging the gap between us and the Father. I want you to sow a $33 seed today in Jesus' name. Those of you that have the Lord's tithe, look on the screen all of the, um, the apps that whereby you may give digitally. They're on the screen. If not on the screen, look in the description and you'll find the links. But I want you to get the seed and I want you to get the Lord's tithe. Return the Lord's tithe today. Now, I love you. If you're in Houston, Texas, I'm looking for you this morning in our in-person Christmas morning worship celebration. It's not going to be but an hour. I'm looking forward to seeing you this morning for 11 a.m. In New Orleans, we have all of our locations open. Make your way to the house of the Lord today and let's celebrate the birth of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Continue to give, continue to tithe. And once again, I say to you, Merry Christmas. We here at RC Blakes Ministries want to thank you for spending this time with us today. This time with us today. RC and Lisa are always honored to have you with us. Don't forget to reach out to us by visiting our website at www.rcblakes.com. While you're there, you may join our mailing list and receive a free download of the Laws of Manifesting Your Vision by RC Blakes. Also look at all of the online programs by RC. You may find all books written by RC and Lisa. Once again, all of us here at RC Blakes Ministries want to thank you from the bottom of our hearts. And as we always say, see you at the top.